I'll probably I'll probably ask that about each one of these. So like when you're reading through it, just try to find something that is not all about this approach compared to the others. But one novel thing is uh, the author has described the sentiment analysis to identify what is sentiment of the people or the particular article or a thing what is being discussed in article. something like this, it's possible you could get like some kind of a metric on um, sense of uh, agreement or like a controversy ranking, something like that, uh, based on the, like how strong the sentiments are in the comments. It's not really something they, they mentioned in that, but another possibility. And um, I'll also mention that since I'm not Dr. Chef, not really the, the expert that I can kind of uh, judge these approaches or anything discussion and throw in my expertise. Uh, I want to make it clear that I'll, I'm just going to be participating in this discussion, like kind of on the same level that you guys are. I'm just going to be a class participant, but um, yeah, I'll try to keep it going at least. Um, okay, so what about the, uh, the news ML page? Like this, it looks like this is kind of um, an approach for automatically understanding the schema. And this part, yeah, it says um, exploiting the implicit semantics of it. So, uh, like I guess in the descriptions of each of these attributes and some of these fields, um, assuming it means they want to map these tag names to a concept in the ontology. assuming that's what was meant by uh, like taking advantage of the implicit semantics.
least the way they're explained. Right, right. Oh, I was, I was moving. I was moving from the, the camel case over to using the yeah the implicit semantics and well, what I guess I guess maybe what we can talk about is uh, how are the implicit semantics being used in this? Like, what does that really mean? Or what's what have you guys read the overall goal to be with that? Implicit semantics. saying what information it will, it will use to extract semantics, but not necessarily what uh, what those are being used for, right? But I guess we can um, kind of make the assumption that, say, these other fields that they mentioned in this are going to be used to uh, help give an ontological mapping from the tag name. So it uses those extra fields to give an ontological mapping for the tag name to um, some concept in, in the schema. That's how I'm reading this, anyway. That's what I'm assuming. Is there anything uh, that we haven't seen yet in the, the photo gallery approach? You see or some the specific ontologies based on the country. You said a little louder. What? No, no. <laughs> okay. Using domain specific ontologies uh, based on the categories that each of the photo belongs to. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, what was the, what were the categories again? Were, so there, were there specific categories mentioned? So wait, where were those categories exactly? Mm -hmm. See new skins was business bird. Okay, so that can give sacrifice sports. So you're saying that that'll uh, they're exploiting the they're exploiting that to give them a context for for some of these things yeah. to disambiguate entities in the captions so, and things. Yeah, so if he sees posted on the sports category. Mm -hmm. So I think he's trying to use the, uh, the domain specific ontology on sports and tries to you know, give meaning of that thing. Based on it, the captions and everything would make more sense. Right. Uh, yeah, definitely. Come Help disambiguate yeah. at least if there are multiple candidates. And he has given some examples like Oscar Victoria's so the Olympic champion.
Yeah, I wasn't sure if they were referring to like metadata inside the image or uh, no. Yeah, so it's using uh, some whatever it can spot in like I guess the captions, right? Yeah, some some of that stuff was in the captions. Like if I were to go to make world on this. <coughs>
questions which are unexplained in What's that? There are some questions which are unexplained in this article. Questions yes. that are in the reviews or you have some the questions? On the tech oh, the, the questions they mentioned at the top. Yeah, let's, uh, I mean, granted, this is probably just like a subset of the information that you would need. I mean, it's just an example of uh, the types of relationships that would be mapped. However, let's try to reconcile um, maybe some of these questions with, I don't know, this model that was uh, drawn in the figures. Um, so retrieving other documents. So yeah, I think that the, the first question that was there could be answered through the extracted information that they that they list here. Uh, it found, you know, it, it models the dispute between them. It models what the dispute is about. Um, I guess where it was disputed. I guess in which article. So yeah, I'm thinking that with the first question it was giving all the art other articles that mention this dispute. And um, you know, it could be like this. This knowledge could be searched in order to find, like I guess, this this concept here or this uh, this instance of that of a mention of that dispute. So has he written before about? Searching over the instances that match, uh, that have John Broder as the author of an article about the Model S. However, um, the point you made promote about the sentiment that might that might come into play here, uh, especially when uh, one idea is maybe getting into uh, storing, like I guess, the results of sentiment analysis in the ontology, or kind of maybe modeling that somehow. Yeah, because in order to know, yeah, if you wrote, dispar wrote disparagingly about electric cars, we, um, I don't know, would that involve sentiment analysis? Is it necessary? I guess, I guess the question is, uh, to, I guess to make it more clear, is sentiment analysis a prerequisite to know if Broder has written disparagingly about electric cars before or wrote negative? sentiment analysis for that, or can it be done um, without, I guess, the popular sentiment analysis techniques and just do, like, uh, triple extraction? In the triple extraction, we do what? Well, um, to find out these, to find out 
relationships like this, for one thing. So we're pulling out. Yes, triple X fraction would be the case that I'm uh, the point you made was about uh, finding articles which taught this bridge in me about uh, I mean the articles that he wrote uh, which taught this bridge yeah. in me, right? So how are you gonna get that sentiment out of the article and this how do you classify an article as being uh, written disparagingly? Well it's it may not necessarily be a, the entire article itself. But you're asking like how could like about my question how could triple extraction yes, help yes, with that? I'm, yeah. I'm guessing that uh, unless we do a sentiment analysis on, on all the articles that he's written and classify them as having been written disparagingly or not, you wouldn't be able to answer this question. Mm -hmm. So I, how would triple extraction help? Um, it may not. So anyway, can anyone think of? Well, I guess, no, I'm not really sure either. I mean, unless I maybe there is uh, the word itself being used and we extract that somehow. Like a, in this case, like disputes. Unless there like is that. some existing knowledge saying that these are the articles that are disparaging the nation. That's why you brought up. Yeah, and that mm -hmm. knowledge base is going to be created by you as you crawl for more articles, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we still come down to the question of how do you uh, classify an article as having been written in this way. Mm -hmm. Would it make sense to do triple extraction on the articles first to find the triples that are, you know, related to, um, I guess, electric cars and what he's saying about electric cars and then running some sort of analysis on just the that? you can be like fairly sure that the article in almost every statement in the article is about one specific topic, the Model S, then I think it would be hard to classify the entire article as you know, sentiment one way or another. that that wouldn't be enough. Like, I, I see your point. Let's try to see if we can find anything in here that could be used to kind of determine that it was in response. Is there enough? Is there enough evidence in the title itself? You would almost have to find. You'd have to determine, I guess, that this link. Of the link, 
yet to find that that's exactly what it's talking about. The, uh, and that's not what it's talking oh, about. Oh, but that's the, the Twitter. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, right. Right. That is, in fact, what you would need to know in order to answer a question like a, a question like the one that was listed here. So, uh, yeah, I think in order, let's see. Well, yeah, I'm not sure. So. We decide that this would need to be supplemented by, I guess, some sentiment clues, like kind of about the about the article itself. Um, like it, it describes this sentiment, conveys this sentiment toward this topic of the article. Or let's say everything in the article is about the Model S. Uh, I don't know. Is that something that we we would need here? Uh, it seems to me like this would come into play to answer the third question too, which is.
that's a good point, I think they're I guess what I'm getting at is the disambiguation part of it, too. Uh, it felt like the examples in this were, were good ones about Washington, either the state or the, uh, or the city, the capital, yeah. Um, so yeah, I like that this one explicitly mentioned the, like, I guess, the occurrence as a way to disambiguate the, the entities that are found in the captions. Um, look for things like But I see what you're saying. NLP alone can't really be used to uh, define the entities, at least as far as I know. But um, it can it can help supplement it though, because let's say I know the concept is has a different part of speech, I guess, or. thing about that too is that there's one per image in the gallery which helps instead of just having um, like a short blurb caption about the gallery uh, yeah, so that definitely is a good thing
similar approach to that of the, uh, the image captions. Um, so to, I counted two new things that they mentioned in this with respect to the, uh, I guess, the photo captions. Possibility might be since they're using links to crawl out to ones that this article links to. Uh, I mean, they could do a lot of times when you see an acronym, when something is turned into an acronym, it's a proper noun, and every uh, first letter in the word of the acronym is capitalized. Uh, like, let's say this, this page only mentioned New York Times and not, not its acronym. Or it only mentioned NYT and not the full expansion. They could maybe look at the links that come out from this page and then see if any of the, you know, the upper camel case, like the first letter of, I guess, labels with upper camel case actually match that acronym. Maybe they could resolve it that way, or see if it's in their list of. Uh,
part did he mention was, or what, what keeps it from being fully automated? Mm -hmm. Why semi-automated instead of fully automated? Or what, what part of it is automated and what needs to be manually reconciled? I don't remember who says that. I don't want to be a bit of a light. They want to be some good intervention. But okay. I, I, like you could like, automate it. Yeah. So that continuous Yeah. I don't somebody.